Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are 19th of March 2024. Um, around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Verhardt. One, two, four, five, eight. we are five, perfect. So let's start with the announcement. Um, weekly release. So the war and Docker image are out, if I'm not mistaken, Mark. Correct. Out. Other packages are being synced to mirrors. I believe it's the, the version is 2.450. It is, yes, that's correct. Um is the change log published to Jenkins IO? Is there some steps? Uh, it finish. should be. I'll double check now that it is. That's a good question. It is now published to to uh, to Jenkins.io, and the permalink version is also available. So, yes, two point four fifty is ready there. Perfect. Container images are likewise uh, should be published by now. I'll check just to be sure. You can mm -hmm. continue, and I'll let you know if there's a problem. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Um, on the announcement, uh, OSU reminder that OSU OSL mirrors are being uh, are down. So one, one of the two is down, two. right? Yes, exactly. And the container images are available and have been available for two hours. Cool. So that means, uh, Stefan, you have to go for updating images. Mm -hmm. And it might have impact for tomorrow's LTS packaging phase. The LTS will have to wait one hour for propagation. Is that correct? That's that certainly works better, right? Because the due to FTP, you, due to OSU USL not getting it immediately, it slows the propagation to the other sites. Perfect. It, but thankfully, it doesn't stop it, which was for me quite quite impressive. It just seems to slow it, because last week we had this same problem and. Six of seven mirrors all got the all got the last week's release within twenty four hours of the build. So nice. it appears none of them are strictly dependent on exactly one of those OSU OSL instances. Yep, that's how I understand it. Um, cool. Uh, is there any other announcement, folks? Nope. Okay. So let's have a look at the calendar. We should have 2.451 next week. That will be 26 March, 2024. Next LTS will be 2.442 and it's tomorrow. So that will be the 20 March, 2024. Right, Chris Stern is release lead and he's on track. Okay, um, Mark, may I ask you while I'm taking notes, uh, just to ping Chris tomorrow to let us know around which hour he wants to start. Usually uh, when it's uh, Alex or him, it's better they start the release as soon as possible on their day since it takes two to three hours. So then the beginning when it's morning for in France for Stefan, Hervé and Hai, then we can start the day with the packaging to watch and the Docker images. I will Instead do that. Instead of waiting later. Is that okay for you? Yes. Thanks. Folks, is there anything else about the next weekly and next LTS? No? Okay. Let's have a quick look at the Jenkins advisory announcement. We had one the six, four, yeah. So no announcement, so nothing, nothing here. 
And the next major event, if you want to meet the team members, should be DevOx France. I'm not even sure we will have a presence on the DevOx France in Paris. So CDCon, CDCon is April 15 through 18, or 16 through 18 in 16. Seattle. Oh, nice. And I'll be there. As will Diraj Singh Joda, uh, one of our former documentation contributors. He's presenting a talk at GitOpsCon. Nice. And you said DevOx France. I don't remember. I can give you the date for that. I... DevOx Paris. Uh, 17th through 19th April. Do we have a presence uh, with Jenkins? I'm not aware of one. Hervé, were you planning? A, had, had you? I don't know if Hervé had grabbed a ticket to DevOps or not. I'm. I'm no. definitely not going to be there. Uh, Adrian, maybe. No. No. Okay. No, okay. So nobody from the team one. at DevOps. Yep. So I propose that we just remove it. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm looking because I might have to travel a weekend to Nantes. But no, that's the week after, so I won't be there either. Mm, okay. So let's remove it then. Anything else on calendar or announcement? Okay. So now let's have a look on the task we were able to complete this week. Um, I'm going to take them on the order on the notes. That's easier. Uh, plugin site build is failing. Uh, Hervé or Stefan, can one of you give us a summary of uh, what happened? So last week, uh, we switched to uh, building this as a plugin site uh, and deploying uh, from uh, pod on private K8S. And last week, he, uh, we switched it, switch, um, this job to uh, Azure uh, Virtual Machine Agent. And as his VM doesn't have doesn't don't have access to the file share, it was RM64 uh, VM yeah. So they were failing. Uh, the job were, was failing. We opened the we authorized the uh, VM uh, virtual net uh, with the file share, and now it's working. Hello to access the production file chair for their network. Uh, fixed and green. Uh, award on the post-mortem. So there has been discussion inside the team on uh, why didn't we coax that problem earlier? Uh, and a proposal to uh, improve that in the future. If I understand correctly, Hervé, you proposed in the area of the monitoring private instances uh, task, you proposed to add to that kind of build um, a kind of export to report Jenkins IO of the, for each build, the status and the date time. So we could have the Datadog monitor that will say if it's failure or if the data is older than 24 hours, then send the page of duty alert to the team. Is my understanding correct of, on what you say, Derve? Yes. As we don't have uh, that many important builds uh, to monitor, uh, we can do that more easily than my previous attempt of reporting uh, private instance uh, jobs. Uh, my previous attempt needs uh, too much uh, permission to be a viable option. So, so I like that. So th th it's like there's a mailbox or a, a directory, a folder where we we drop job status from private into a public readable location, and then Datadog just reads the public location. Yes. I like that. That's elegant because then that, yeah, that's okay. So then if, if someone were to compromise the, 
that that public location all they're doing is compromising the data they're not getting access inside our jobs nice yeah, exactly yeah. um do we have another post mortem for this one because i mean the root cause is something that can happen in that case it was a tricky one honestly uh now we know and we improved the um uh, the Azure network uh, uh, restriction by adding command on why is this network load and why this network load, etc. I don't see something that could have been done differently. Um, you see me, me checking on the on, on the main branch after merging. Yeah, but that's part of the learning process. That's an area you never worked with before. So that's why I think the real actionable for the team that we can really do instead of saying we should do better that's an actionable that say, hey, let's have a monitor to protect us. So everyone will feel better because we know that if something breaks and we miss it, because whatever human reason, then we catch it early and we are proactive. Right. I agree. Yeah. Well, so, I, yep. I, I mean, it, it's that idea is even almost a general purpose thing. Could Could we configure every private job to report its status into some tree on reports.jenkins.io so that that's exactly what i've done oh good. In my attempt previously but the big really big issue with that is i'm using a jenkins token so it's a no go ah because I see. we can't manage its life cycle without requiring i permission got it all right so that oh, will be yeah. worth a plugin. And I believe you search and you saw a plugin which is maintained, alas. There was a plugin that would add a post build steps to every pipelines that yeah. could have done the job, but that's an old plugin. But because yeah. My, yeah, my suggestion here is to add a post step to reports, but it's uh, imply modifying pipelines. While my previous attempt was mm -hmm. using Jenkins API without needing to modify every I see testing pipeline. Okay, yeah, got it. So I if in... anyone uh, watching that want to help us to to take care of that plugin to have a, a an automatic afterward task is more than welcome. Mm. Yep. That could or be if nice Mark or Bruno are really in a good mood, I mean. <laughs> And so the proposal is to start with that simple one because mm -hmm. the amount of job to be modified is quite low. Right. And that could be a great start. We have a few one in InfraCI, a few one on Trusted, but that's something that doesn't change that often. So yeah, it won't cover the case of the new job or the changes, but at least we will have something on the important job like this one. So that will be a first step improvement. Any other question on this one? Thanks for the work on this, folks. Uh, thanks, Hervé, because you cooked it this morning and you did additional hours today on this one. So many thanks. Next one, SSL certificate on CI Jenkins IO and assets CI Jenkins IO did, wasn't renewed. So thanks, Mark, for catching that. Uh, root cause. Uh, as so that's my fault each time we create a new virtual machine that require migrating data i always forgot that let's encrypt create a new account for generating certificates based on the host name of the virtual machine since it's changed it's changed um the problem should be fixed on the latest Let's Encrypt Puppet module that we use however that require Puppet 7 or 8 to be fixed because Let's Encrypt should be set up to select one of the uh, accounts instead of failing. So uh, as each VM migration, how old pet module for Let's Encrypt creates a new account and fail because only one is needed. So uh, I fixed it manually. 
I try to add the, the logs, the file that I looked on. So if someone else has the same issue, you can report, take that issue, search for it, find it, and see what I did on the machine. Uh, I removed the secondary account that was old and renew the certificate uh, with details on the issue. Um, award on post-mortem, I believe we still are in dire need of avoiding uh, mark-based monitoring. <laughs> That's really useful and thanks for that mark, but still as a team, we should have Datadog monitoring and alerting us for that kind of things in the future. So I see an improvement here as well. Vigate ages with Datadog pager duty instead of waiting for mark. Because if you lose electricity on your basement, we are doomed to failure here. <laughs> if I lose electricity in my basement, I have a very serious problem. Fair. <laughs> the Jenkins project has a less serious problem, but I have a very serious problem if I lose power in my basement. Is there any question or need for clarification on that issue? No. Thanks, Mark, for raising it. Next one, uh, there was an old uh, test project on Jira that required to be removed to avoid uh, newcomers opening issues on the wrong project. So thanks, Alex, for the for mentioning and raising this. I've removed the project and it's done. We had a permission uh, plugin permission issue, so that has been uh, treated by the Jenkins CI admin, if I'm not mistaken. A Jenkins password issue, of course, that has been fixed. Uh, Stefan, Kubernetes 1.27, what's the status? It's closed here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to to um, copy and paste the logo. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's done. We, we, we finished uh, this morning with the public K8S on Azure. So we did private K8S yesterday on Azure and today public K8S. It went quite well. And we took advantage of that uh, operation this morning to uh, bump the version for Falco and Nginx. Uh, uh, sorry. Charts. Charts, yeah. Ingress, yes. Charts. I was looking for Ingress. As part of the operation. So you have to add the logo on the issue. Yeah. And uh, we will have to think about Kubernetes 1.28. Let's uh, propose that we give us one week of cool down and next week we start creating and planning the issue. Is that okay for you, Stefan? Yes. Perfect. May I uh, give you the responsibility to do that next week? Yes, thank you. Kubernetes one. Unless, uh, Hervé, you want to take care of the next Kubernetes one, the 28, I don't care. I don't have any advice or opinion, so. I, I will still need you to review all the change logging and everything for, with me to make sure that I don't miss something. Okay. Cool, so write this down and we'll see next week. Uh, new mirror in Singapore. Hervé, can you give us uh, a quick status? Um, yeah, I, can... uh, uh, I don't remember. So it's free this, I think. Uh, let me just find the, the name of the person coming back. Yeah, free diff. Carry. Uh, oh, they okay. came back uh, to, almost two years later to tell us that they were ready to host a mirror. And uh, after adding uh, their information into mirror bits, it took a while, but the uh, mirror was available everywhere and is yes. running fine. Cool. So one more mirror for our Asian user. Thanks uh, for that. And and the story here is beautiful because they are 
occur the GOIP only a few kilometers separate from each other. Thus, they will be used at about 50% by all the consumers in India. So what we just did was reduce the load on Servana by about 50%. So wow. that's very kind of them to have done this, and and it's a it'll, it's a nice a very very nice improvement. Quick question, Mark: Is it planned to add uh, mirrors provider in the sponsor page of Jet yes. Inside? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's sp mirrors. Pro mirror providers are a separate category, independent of the layers that we've been proposing. Otherwise, there were. There were multiple layers, and then in addition, mirrors because it's a very different thing. Okay. To add, so that means we have to think about to add in the sponsor page. Is my understanding correct? Yeah. So what? Well, we don't need to think about it. the The governing board has an action item that a sponsors we need to revise how the sponsors are presented on the jenkins.io website entirely because we've we had a very simple mod we have a very simple model that we're presenting right now either you get a big logo or you don't and there are very different levels of sponsorship in, of of jenkins and we need to show that more clearly JFrog is a very large sponsor uh, cloudbees is even bigger than that and so we've got to show those things accurately and Basil Crow is working has a, a working prototype that he's working as part of his membership on the governance board. Cool, thanks. Any other question on the free diff mirror in Singapore? Okay. Uh, we had a few issues closed for not work. So there was a plugin not released, but that was because the plugin sites so the plugin was released and available on Update Center, but not visible on plugin Jenkins IO. And that should be okay now. Is that correct, Hervé? Can you repeat the question, please? Sorry. Yeah, it, it, looks... yeah, it was uh, because the plugin site was uh, down. Wasn't built. Okay. Yeah. Um... Request latest plugin ill scoring application logs. So that was something opened by Adrien and same same root cause. The plugin site wasn't built. So plugin ill score did its job and computed. It's just that the publication on plugin site wasn't done. Well, and, and Adrien's notes remind that there is another publicly visible location where you can read plugin health score. Plugins.jenkins.io is very convenient, but there's another public location where people who want to see it even faster can see it. Cool. The good thing to provide to developers. Uh, then uh, free Jenkins account stuff with either no answer or someone doing something not expected to be on account Jenkins IO. And uh, uh, an whole issue was closed around bridging IRC channels on Matrix Gitter, but the bridge doesn't exist anymore on IRC neither for our channel, so no need to do anything. Anything else on the closed or done issues? Nope, okay. So let's go on the work in progress. I'm gonna try to follow. So as usual, that will be by priority. Uh, top priority for us is the update center. Uh, Hervé, could you give us a, a quick update on what's the status for the new update center with the work you did last week? Um, the pull request uh, synchronizing uh, Azure file share and R2 buckets uh, in parallel of the current uh, storage is uh, merged and uh, I've configured the update center jobs on trusted.jenkins.io to, to run this sync in parallel. <coughs> And to run every five minutes instead of three minutes, as the job takes a bit more time now. Um, this uh, storage are in sync with the current uh, used one. We can now uh, do more validation and testing. Nice. 
Nice job. So that means we are going now to prepare the test phase. However, just a question, what's the test status for crawler? Is the crawler updating at least once a week? Yes, yeah, since a few weeks or months already. Updating everything. Tool install metadata. Cool. So the next step, if I understand correctly, are start testing the new mirror system to see how Jenkins instance will behave. You did, a, you did an initial test during the first phase. So now the idea is to start eventually consuming the new mirror system with our own uh, controllers. Performance benchmark, benchmark of the new system. And we need to work on the JEP. Uh, particularly, one of the points we need to address outside the usual uh, GP review, uh, that's something we started to discuss earlier this morning with Hervé, uh, that's what will be the fallbacks if we cannot pay for Cloudflare or if Cloudflare doesn't want to sponsor us. We need, uh, we need exits if this happens. So we need to describe the different use cases here. What, the, what are the ones we can afford? What, one, what are the ones that require creating a sponsorship? Or what will be the eventual costs if we use our current infrastructures? You mean, you mean adding, adding a, a node, not from them? For instance. But that, that's what will be the fallback if we have an issue with Cloudflare. We need to cover this element as part of the GPP. Oh, well, I would have had that before. What do you mean? I would have had an, another node from another company to to provide that for that, that, That's implementation Wait. detail. That's what we have to discuss and write and propose okay. in the GEP. Uh, since neither you or I did a, a full towers review of what Hervé already wrote on the GEP, we have to do it in the okay. coming week. Agreed. And uh, plan for a brownout. We need to start planning uh, to use the new system during one hour at a given time and see what, what will be the expectation. Is it breaking the installations of the user? And then to see the result if we can have a full day brownout next. Did I miss something? Is there something else survey that we should plan for that task? No, that looks good to me. Okay. So Damien, just to be clear for me, the new mirror system is is testable already, right? Yes. It's it's that I can get I could get to it and see it on Cloudflare for for experimental purposes. Yes. So not on okay. so not directly on Cloudflare. Okay, you will right. point at the mirror system on Azure that mm -hmm. will redirect you to Cloudflare because that's the only available mirror. Great. Okay. Thank you. So, Hervé, I believe you will continue working on this or do you want to start passing tasks except the GEP parts that we need to review since you wrote? Mm, I'm okay to continue on this. Cool. Next one, still Hervé, BlobXFer and AZ copy. What's the status for this one? I'm still working on mirror scripts. Uh, update to add uh, AZ copy in parallel of BlobXFer. Um, we... ah, it's not ready, but uh, it should wait after the LTS release anyway. Mm -hmm. Waiting for after the LTS release. Puppet and digging history. <laughs> uh, when this will be ready, as it copy will be, uh, will have replaced public sphere. The so next steps will be the cleanup of old. Um, Storage account and permission, and we are a big cleanup. 
everywhere. Clean up. Removal of Blobix fair and storage accounts. Clean up. Is that yeah. is that okay? Cool. Do you seek to continue working on this? Do you need help? Do you want to share the burden? Um, I can continue on this. I might help uh, ask for help when I get a full list of cleanup tasks. That just a note for everyone: that task generate a lot of um, things we see to improve on the puppet area. Uh, we try to do this as uh, distinct tasks. I believe we could uh, open issues. Hervé, uh, what do you think on the Jenkins Infra Puppet repo separatedly from Helpdesk? Because these will be improvements, uh, such as moving back the mirror script to Puppet, uh, having the whole mirror brain mirror script things again managed by Puppet until we do something about that. But my proposal is here we continue with the repository which version scripts can be have pull request and is auditable. We switch on PKG because it's not a blocker and then we will improve on Puppet later. Yes. Anything else on the blob XFair by AZ copy? Cool. Thanks. Congratulations. Nice. Yes, that's a huge work. So thanks for the work on this one. Stefan, RM64. What's the status? Um, I would have to go a little back, but um, I did uh, one of the image, which is shared between um, InfraCI and CI uh, Jenkins.io, Docker Web Builder. Um, but that's the one that uh, uh, bumped into the wall of the um, Allow not allowed to uh, for plugin site, so we'll have to uh, to double check for the steps on uh, deploying to make sure that uh, um, the new agent, either a pod or an, an, an a VM, got all the rights everywhere. Um, but uh, I got uh, a whole other um, uh, Docker image to uh, to switch to. Uh, IRM, so it's work in progress. Okay, then Jenkins, are your additional work labels, etc. Yeah, maybe um, we will have yeah. to uh, to uh, match some labels between CI and Infra, but we need to to yep. make sure to use the correct names. So we could have unified pipeline. Because the, the challenge here is to ensure that we have the same environment on both. We can still have the same the same pipeline because we can use the the double pipe uh, uh, version to have both names from uh, Infra and from um, CI, but uh, it would be nicer to have the exact same name and the exact same kind of of agent to be uh, homogeneous. But the goal is to avoid having two different environments between InfraCI and CI Jenkins for the exactly. same build. To, uh, to be homogeneous? You don't say homogeneous? Yep. homogeneous? Yep. Yes, that is the correct word. Thank you. Um, because that's, in for the example, plugin site uh, issue were caused by one of these changes. So that's why it's not an, uh, it's a set of complex changes with impacts, but that's for the better. So we can streamline the update of the toolings. Um, I think Hervé cooked an hidden uh, error, which is not an error because there is a pipe pipe true on the pipeline. Uh, we have a missing tool. I don't remember uh, in plugin site. I think it's a linter or something. Typo and typo textile. Typo and typo check style. So that's just a matter of adding them to Packer image and delivering them and seeing the results. Yep. If I... Be a warning, there is no ARM64 release. <laughs> ah, <laughs> nice. So maybe we will have to, to search or to do something about that. 
keeps a by pipe true. <rire> we need lint anyway. <rire> Um, Stefan, you mentioned uh, another image on next steps. Uh, uh, another Docker image, or I think you covered all, right? We see you, but we can't hear you. So looks like you have a sound issue, or is it only me? You got the best part of me, <laughs> man. It's good. So uh, I forgot the name, so I will have to click on the link. No worries. Yeah. That name, so it's air poof, and, and I'm working on Linux GNLP Linux. Linux GNLP, yes, okay, it's GNLP dash Linux. Agent, GNLP. That one should be easy. I don't think we should have any pipelines. Yes, any I will never say that anymore. Um, I saw, and I might be wrong, but I'm almost sure I saw a Docker HashiCorp tools job on Infra CI. So that one need to be cleaned up because you already did the heavy work, as far as I can tell. Just a note here, I will add it on the issue. Okay. Or do it myself, I don't mind. But just a note so it's written somewhere. Yeah, thank you. The nice work. Anything else? Any question or clarification on RM64 for the agents? <laughs> Almost there. Um, Docs Jenkins, say you. Uh, Hervé, I believe you didn't have time to spend on this. Do you think you should be able to do it for the next milestone? Yeah, I think I will at least start on it, yeah. Okay. Let's continue this milestone. Um, I want to bring up a service principle used by Infra CI to spawn Azure agent expires Thursday, so that one will be top priority here. Uh, Hervé, can you give us uh, something, an explanation on this one? <clears throat> so we have a service principle, which passwords uh, will expire on Thursday. It's used by Infra CI uh, controller to spawn uh, agent in Azure, in Azure. So yeah. It's in the Terraform definition of this service principle. So uh, we need to update uh, this password and then update uh, credential in Shaft's secret private repository. Generate new credential update secrets, deploy, test, and profit. So we will have to do it this uh, week. Is there someone with a particularly particular willingness for doing it? This no, Ooh, so yeah, well, I don't care. Uh, okay, um... I, I don't mind taking it. It's just if someone was really interested into doing this, um, I don't fun. mind doing it in pair. Uh, but that one does not require pair or team sync, as far as I can tell. If there is an issue, I will ask one the one of the two of you uh, for pairing with me if needed. But most probably that will be pull request to review. Any question? Okay, uh, we had an issue about IPv6 and MTU. Uh, my proposal will be to close it. We have a user with a unusual MTU value. <laughs> uh, and when they use that MTU on the network, that means the packets are fragmented in the entrance on the Azure virtual networks because they use uh, 1,500 so that means you don't have the same packet size. So those packets are, are uh, cut. And uh, as I shared with them on the documentation from uh, Azure, we don't have any actionable here. We cannot control the MTU of the world data center of Azure Microsoft. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'm really sorry for that user, but I don't see any actionable for us to help them, especially because Microsoft recommend not tuning the MTU, otherwise their accelerated network will drop packets, which is what happened in the case. Uh, in their case, they have a solution. They use a IPv6 to four uh, uh, tunnel system right now for testing. Uh, they provided me a nice uh, website tunnel broker where I was able to reproduce their issue. But there is no reason to have an MTU of 1460. <laughs> so I don't see what we can do. If anyone else has an idea. I don't mind uh, learning something, but right now I don't see what we can do other uh, other than buying a data center and the network stack and hiring network engineers and doing everything ourselves. We got everything in the basement of Mark already. Mark, are you ready to tune the MTU of your ISP? <laughs> no, I am not, but thank you for asking. My <laughs> MTU is going to stay exactly, what, although I like my IPv6 very much. So my proposal, I've asked the user if they see other actionable because it looks like they know what they are doing somewhat at the low level, so they might have actionable for us. But other than that, I propose that in before end of week, uh, I'll close the issue as nothing to do unless uh, we have something that we call action. Is there any objection or discussion on that one? Up. Yeah, I learned things along the way on IPv6. But yeah, that's almost the same as IPv4 for network tuning. Should be closed end of week unless user has actionable for us. Alas, we cannot tune MTU on Microsoft networks. And looks like Fastly also is concerned by their issue, so. I mean, we won't change neither Fastly or Azure data centers. It's already good that we got IPv6. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> uh, next issue on the list is someone with wrong email registration. I've asked them to create a new account because they messed up the email. I mean, we use this it as a verification. So uh, unless they can prove, but that's the wrong email. Uh, we'll see if they create a new account, then we will be able to remove this one because the date and time of creation maps to what they asked. But if they don't, then we will close the issue uh, next week uh, as no answer back from the user. Thanks everybody for taking care of this one. Any question? Wait for user response. I'll close next week, if none. Um, we have a new Jenkins mirror in Romania, which is brewing by Ostico. Hervé, can you give us a status about this one? We are waiting for the response. And we have another, another one from RDC. Same, waiting for the response too. Waiting for response. Um, I don't. I remember there was one they need to enable HTTPS, and the other one they need to enable Air Sync or FTP. Is they, yeah, they need to put a Jenkins folder and do the initial sync. Okay. Um, can I let you create an issue for the th for the third mirror, please, so we can track them separately and have audit log because yeah, email are really hard to read. I don't mind using email for exchange with them, but we yeah, can I ask you to keep okay. track of this? Unless you are full and busy, and then you can hand over the mirror thing, but let us know. Let us know if you are unable to create the issue and follow yeah. the topics. Um, we have a whole set of topics around ACP, the artifact caching proxy. Let me regroup them. Um, so we have different elements here. Three issues are caused by ACP. 
So the first one opened by Basil as a consequence of the repo Jenkins cleanup we did a few weeks or month ago. Uh, the builds are now slower because ACP is only caching element that come from repo Jenkins CI.org. Since we remove the mirroring of Maven Central from that repo, because we don't want to be used as a free mirror for everyone, now ACP as a consequence is not caching elements that come from Central. Each Maven build from each ephemeral agent download everything all the time from Maven Central. Basil proposal is to uh, slightly update our existing configuration so that the ACP will start again caching these elements even if they come from Central, which makes sense that should accelerate some of the builds. So I propose that this one should be a quick one. I'm removing myself right now because we need to discuss the others. So we have an issue regarding incremental jars. I haven't had time to to dig on this one that has been opened by Uli. I'm not sure to really understand and we need to dig. I took that the incrementals weren't cached, meaning in that there might be something wrong in the configuration of that job. I don't think we cache incremental. And the problem is that it shouldn't fail because if the ACP doesn't cache, that means Maven directly contact repo Jenkins CI incremental. So there is something wrong on that build that needs to be checked. We didn't have time, neither Hervé, Stefan or Hai, but we need to analyze this one. That might be a job misconfiguration, but that's only a good feeling. Finally, the fourth and most important one is <clears throat> related to delays on building on small plugin on build agents. That one is sitting here since quite some time. We thought it was related to digital ocean builds that we upgraded Kubernetes version and retried. But as Basil and Mark confirm, even if it work on CI, most of the builds are slow and are clearly slow during the dependency resolution phase. <coughs> that means we need to improve the performances of the ACP. Um, I was a bit dismayed because I was really, uh, I had a negative time uh, two weeks ago thinking maybe we should get rid of ACP. But as Basil pointed out, maybe we could improve the performances. It's working most of the time, but we need improvement and performance improvement. Um, we need to work on this one in order to accelerate the build for better developer experience on CI Jenkins IO, and also the builds that are faster cost less for us on the clusters. So we have different incentives here. A service for a user that need to be improved, stability and maintainability of the infrastructure and costs. Now, uh, that thing being said, most of the problem come from running that service on Kubernetes. It had so many layers at network level, it's really hard to diagnose. The initial proposal from Hervé uh, about hey, why don't we use virtual machine here could be a solution because with on the paper, in theory, having a machine with only Nginx proxy and storage, that should be simpler to investigate for performances. That will remove ingress layer, virtual network layer, container network layer, container system layers, IOs, storage, etc. Of course, that would have a cost. The, we will remove the ACP from Kubernetes and move them to virtual machine. The cost should be slightly the same. However, that would require a few network architectural thoughts. Particularly, do we want to keep it HA? And if that's the case, we need two virtual machines with a load balancer. How yeah. do we manage the certificate? Do we terminate certificate at load balancer level? We will we not need have to... choice. There are choices, but that need to be thought and defined as an architectural platform process. Yeah, for each provider. Exactly. Each provider right. might have a different uh, set of offers. And also network level. We want these machines eventually to be only reachable inside our private network. Maybe that would simplify the, the certificate part though. 
But still, uh, that means uh, we need something. We need to think about this. Or we need to diagnose the performance issues in Kubernetes. So the first step would more be a Datadog and, and log analysis? In theory, yes. In practice, I'm not really willing into dealing with performance issue on Kubernetes cluster that we don't manage because I don't have access to the lower level machines on most of these clusters. So diagnosing this will be just a pain. You will need to okay. have indirect observation of the system. Okay. Kubernetes uh, might or might not be the right way. The, and, and since we have three different Kubernetes with three different operating system, I mean, we are lo what we gain in Kubernetes um, automation, we lose on reproducibility of the behaviors. Okay. Um, my initial proposal will be to start with a non-highly available system with only one virtual machine on each provider. And we start to compare the performances with the existing ACP. That will be a first step. And then we see if we need to scale horizontally, vertically, or both. But okay. the thing is the person that will take care of Basil proposal for caching artifact Maven Central should be the same person leading the topics here. The rationale here is the following. That part from Basil is how do we understand the service we provide and how is it consumed? That's a request from a user. And once we have loaded in our memory the okay, the user are using it like this, we understand the pro and cons, then we can start thinking about the architecture and performance improvement of the system. Oh, we cannot I start. Would, uh, I would have not stop. done that like that because you you this one mean um, asking more to the ACP and having more work and more data and 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 mm -hmm. increasing everything. And right now we are seeing that it's not uh, um, in in a good state in, in an enough good state yet. We and don't that have we need formal to improve proof. The stability. We don't have formal proof that ACP as performance issue. What we see is builds are slow when it comes to resolving dependency. That's the only fact we have today. And additionally, so we, cannot, we cannot know if it's ACP or the or the, the Kubernetes, but at the end of the of the, of the of the road it's it's the caching that we set up and, and that may be solved by using VM. So what I mean is that increasing what we ask ACP to, to deal with should come after stabilizing. And the second point here that you're there. missing is that we were caching these artifacts before the changes we did on repo Jenkins, which means for at least one year, oh, ACP, ACP was doing that. Yes. So ACP already handled that load. And right now the balance will be the time we will gain on caching artifact from Maven Central, what we used to do, is clearly an initial gain that we can have now on the build time. I understand. So, so doing the both at the same time can can be a win-win because we can save and time for the user and... Exactly. And and for okay. both Hervé and you, uh, the experience on the Maven, if you take that task, if one of you take that task, it makes sense for you to first think in terms of what is the production, what is the service what is the contract with our end user? And that task is a perfect fit for really putting the hands here before starting thinking implementation. Because if we think implementation without having an, an extensive knowledge on how does it work in production, then there is no reason you could come with a proper architecture because you need to understand how is it consumed before shaping something. Hmm. Does it make sense for is is my explanation making sense or is it does it seems like too much? Yeah, I'm not completely convinced yet, but I think that my English is not good enough for me to explain exactly what I meant. And and I know I think that I understand where you want to bring me or us in the in the comprehensive of of, of that Maven usage. Um I'm Still. just I'm just Still. saying this one is distinct from the other one. However, we need one of the three of us 
to take care of both issues leading them. That doesn't mean the other cannot help. It's just that it's a one world task on the same subject, same area, and we need to avoid context switching. That means we need to first have a clear mind on how is the service consumed and by what, so then we can come with an architecture for improving the performances of the service if needed. So that's why the order. We need to be sure that this one breaks the service or at least slow it down. And then we need understanding on where is it consumed so you can architecture and decide. I mean, there is no, no need to start a virtual machine if you don't understand the service. Yeah, but you just said we need to first thing find why this one is slowing down and why we got that slowing down. But before you said that there is no way to debug that with the Kubernetes uh, setup we have. So if it comes that? if it comes to ACP slowness, but we need to demonstrate that it's slowed down by using ACP. Okay. I thought so, that he had done that. I, I'm not sure I'm f following. So Damien, I had assumed from from Basel's description here that we would enable allow ACP to cache Maven central artifacts yes. as as a as an independent step. Is that an independent step that we could take while still thinking about the other things or are they somehow dependent yes. on each other? No, no, no. Um, they, there is no dependency. These are two different. Okay, different. so so we um, could yeah. we can imp, we could enable caching of Maven central artifacts by ACP and watch to see does it improve or not. Exactly. I see. Okay. So so then if it improves and our problem is solved, we don't have to worry about anything else, right? Then we're we're exactly. largely done. Exactly. Thanks. Okay. That's that's uh, that's uh, maybe a clearer way than what I said, Stefan. So, yes, because for me that was pushing too hard. But when you said we were caching that before, that means that yes, we can try, and so, uh, at so, least for for a few hours maybe. So if we and 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 the allow caching of artifacts from Maven Central, is it as? Is it just a change to the settings.xml file that we distribute, or is there yes. something we must also do to ACP to allow it to to actually retain those artifacts? Theoretically, we only have to do this. Okay, In so practice, just practice, we will have to monitor and watch, but we need more than one hour or one day because, as Basil uh, wrote, the variance happens after a lot of builds. So we need to ah. enable it for at least one week and run a bunch of builds to see if it changes something. Okay, and yeah, I volunteer and maybe we will to run to... builds. I'm happy to run builds. <laughs> and maybe we will have to increase the, the hard drive we set for the caching, no? If we had a lot of... That's, That's something good... to watch. That's a good point. We That's should a very good point. I, because uh... we used to cache these elements. So the, the study that Hervé did in the past should still be valid today. We haven't increased the amount of plugins or builds that much. But yes, that's true. But I remember when you added uh, monitoring on Datadog, on the load on this one. Yeah, so I think, we... too, yes. I think it's just heavy, but yes, I think it did. Uh, so, yeah, so, but that's a good point. We should uh, take care of this. I'm sorry to, to ask way too many questions, but uh, it was not clear enough for me. That's that's why uh, that's a good thing to take time to read the issues and ask the question. Read the issue before the meeting and ask the question like you are doing during the meeting. So we all agree on the goal. Otherwise, it's only on my brain. So you did good. I had to read because I had to deal the the meeting last week. So and I did. That's also proved my initial point that I believe that the person in charge of the architecture should start by that issue, not only because it's distinct, but also the person who will draft an architecture of the final system that can be keep the current one, that person need to have a clear view on how is it consumed. That's mandatory. Otherwise, I don't see the point of you or every spending time if it's not clear for you how is it consumed. I don't see the point. It will be only a waste of time for everyone. I understand. So my proposal is that 
we give us uh, the team 24 hours before someone volunteers on that uh, on that ACP set of tasks. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Hervé? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm taking notes here. Let's digest this for 24 hours and decide who want to lead. I'm opening that to everyone because that might be an interesting topic, but it's a big topic. That means if someone takes it, it will take time and effort. I'm saying that related to the context switch and the effort required here for this one. That's why I don't mind having multiple person on it, but we need someone to lead to have a clear view and lead the subject. I don't mind doing it. I don't mind someone else doing it. I don't have any opinion or preference. That's why I'm opening the topic globally. And I propose everyone digest. And if no one volunteers, I take it by default. But if anyone is interested in leading the topic, I don't mind having someone else leading. And I will be happy to help if needed. OK. Is there any question on the ACP part? No, oh, okay. Uh, there is a request for a new job on pl for plugin hill scoring on CI Jenkins IO. I don't know the status. I think it's assigned to you, Hervé. Uh, yeah, I haven't started on it. Uh, okay. It's uh, creating a new job to generate the reports from plugin hill scoring. Mm -hmm. So it can be consumed by plugin site. Instead of querying string and scoring API on Git. Okay, so that means um, homogeneous pipeline. Is it only okay? We might need to ask question to Adrian. What is the artifact generated by that job? What it's kind of something delivery? I've... Yeah. It's from what I suggested to him to be like the other consumed data from plugin site. Currently, plugin site is consuming data from reports, not querying API. So we created a pull request, um, a new pipeline in plugin L scoring to generate a report with the content from the API. Yes, we but then that, mean, that means CI Jenkins IO should not be used for that. Because... Uh, yeah. This Issue is um, must, uh, might uh, need uh, some editing. Okay. Do you want to take that? Do you want me to take that and bring it to uh, Adrian since you already have the docs Jenkins IO and AZ copy? How do you feel about? If you want, if you, if you want to see that with Adrian, but uh, I'm okay to keep that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, want. So then that mean. Um, Validate with the team because I, I have a feeling that CI Jenkins IO might not be the destination, especially yes. if we need to publish yes. content on report Jenkins IO. Yes. So you are assigned. Uh, we keep you assigned. I propose you try this week and you hand over if you don't have time this week. Is that okay for you? Yes. Because that's a lot. Um, okay, I'm trying my best. We have. CI Jenkins IO AWS account. Uh, so using the credits that AWS gave to us. So right now it's on my side. Bootstrap admins on the new AWS account. Next step, decide who drive the creation of the new CI Jenkins IO EKS cluster in it. So I propose, uh, given the overload, the, the workload, I take that issue for bootstrapping uh, the accounts. And next week, we decide we we'll want to drive the topic of the new uh, cluster that will be managed by Terraform uh, with multiple subscription on AWS, like we did with Azure. So the goal will be to move away the existing cluster to the new one to consume credit on the new account. 
Is that clear? And does it make sense? Okay. Um, I propose to put on the backlog the new private Kubernetes cluster in the new sponsored Azure subscription. The target was in FraCI. Uh, I propose to move it temporarily to focus on the AWS new cluster. Is that okay for everyone? Yes, yes. Uh, that will give uh, Stefan some time to finish either virtual machines or changes on RM64, and then we can think about consuming these credits. Is that okay for everyone? Um, back to backlog for now. AWS is the priority. Uh, update please step fail regularly when processing Jenkins IO pull requests. Uh, that one I propose to move to the backlog as well, because it's not a blocker, it's annoying, I understand, but the effort on splitting GitHub app and rate limit and stuff uh, is is not something we can do right now. So unless someone object, I propose to move this to backlog. Not a blocker. Even if annoying. Um, finally, I had it back the revoke open VPN. Uh, we should be able to have a lot of certificate revoked. I haven't deployed yet. I will wait for after the, the LTS, but I found the solution explained on the pull request on the issue. So once the new VPN version is deployed, we should have revoked the whole certificates. Mark. Be careful because both you and I, and I think the four of us have whole certificate that we renewed and I revoked the whole certificate based on the timestamps. So only the most recent one for your username should be valid. So if you see issues when connecting your VPN, then immediately report uh, on the Jenkins in IRC channel with the ID of your certificate. And then we can check if it has been revoked or not. Great. Uh, so when was that deployed um sometime before the last say four hours it's not deployed yet i want oh, not to wait after okay, the good. lts to not block either Chris, oh, good. You okay so when deployed then i should connect attempt to connect from the my vpn my vpn on my machine if it works i'm happy if not i need help diagnosing got it thank you if not it's damien's fault <laughs> If exactly. not, it means I'm using an out-of-date certificate and I shouldn't be. So using a revoked certificate, this is really good if I'm blocked because it says you revoked a certificate that we had agreed should be revoked before. Very good. Okay, I'm sorry it's long today. We still have to check the new issues that are not dry-aged. Um, quietly skipped incremental deployment after retry from Jesse. Okay, that that need to be analyzed. Uh, if no one object, I'm interested into looking into this one. No one objects. No. Okay, let me add it to the new milestone then. Um, I will add the title after. Uh, then, so service principle, that's the one you created. I will have to remove the triage. Uh, there is this one, Mark. I'm not sure what to do about it. Uh, is it possible if uh, you or someone from the board takes it? Because it yeah. looks like it's related to the meeting project on Jira, Jira and I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm a Jira admin. You're welcome to assign it to me. I have no idea how to do this, but I'm happy to go learn how to do it. Okay, if you have a, if you need help, I don't mind uh, assisting you. It's just that uh, doing it, it is something, but I think we should confirm that the proposal from Alex is okay for everyone first. Great. Any question on this one? I'm adding myself as well and the new milestone. Okay. Um, permission for Jenkins security scan repo. 
I believe that one should be, we need, oh no, it's for us. It's not Jenkins CI admin, right? I see the repository are inside Jenkins infra. All right. Okay, so I'm taking it as uh, admin. Okay. Um, Delphix plugin bundles proprietary dependency. Uh, that one should be on me as a board member. You can take okay. the triage off of it. They're they're doing just fine. Okay, yeah. They're making the right the right steps, and Daniel Beck has agreed that their steps are fast enough. And I think, yeah, to clear the cool. triage setting and for next next milestone is good. Cool. Thanks, Mark. I don't see other new issues. Thanks, Hervé. Up, adding to the milestone. Okay. Uh, so, so there's a there's a chance that we can actually resolve that one on the Romanian mirror next week. They're they're responding, or I think Ostico will be the first one to respond. Great. Uh, LCS, LDS. The problem is they are using uh, all. CentOS server, so getting TLS working on it might take some time. Mm. Shame, shame, CentOS, shame. No, actually, what a great operating system. It's lasted for 10 years. That, isn't that just amazing, Damien? Aren't you just a, that, that OSU OSL has used CentOS 7 for 10 years? Wow. Now, yeah, I'm glad they're getting off of it now. That's a good yeah. choice, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's all on the new issues. I see that the packaging step succeeded on release CI. Very so good. I think we're good. Is Interesting. There the, the package step succeeded on the second try. Yes. So, the FGP so does, is working does that on. mean that, yeah, does that mean OSU OSL is back? Interesting. Or the URL you cooked provided uh, uh, to AirSync seems like a generic URL. So we have one chance out of two to go on the. Oh, oh that could one. be. They may direct. Run roaming DNS. Yes. Right. That could be. That That's that's very good. That's all for me. Is there anything else you want to add? Don't see anything else right now. So good for everyone. Yes. I'm yes. Top yes. screen share. Okay. Yes, we already have five hosts hosting the weekly release. Yes. So we're we're doing just fine. So I'm gonna stop recording. So for people watching us, see you next week. Bye bye. Bye.